Um, and let me tell you a little bit about this. Um, I've been interested in, in digitalization for some time, and I heard often from people, oh, you know, the future of agriculture is, is digital, right? Now, clearly that's a little bit of overhype, but in general, um, you know, it's an important part of the future of European of agriculture um, for many reasons, for environmental reasons, for cost for uh, income, for farmers' reasons, etc. But then when we start thinking about, well, okay, what does that mean for the future of women in agriculture? Because we can see that women aren't particularly well represented in the agri-tech sector. Um, they have difficulties um, in the tech sector. So we did some background research on that and we saw that, you know, there, it's really quite shocking some of the, the statistics. Um, the European Commission had done their own work on this and had found that you know 24 out of every 1,000 graduates were, were female in the ICT sector. And you know only six of those actually went to work in the sector. And then coming from the agri side, we can see that there's a real lack of representation still of women, particularly um, on boards, on management positions. So if you join those two things together, you have a synergistic problem. So, Keeping that in mind, looking at these projects, Smart Agri Hubs and IOF, what's what's the you know reason for them being? Well, they're supposed to be inclusive. We're supposed to do sort of exponential agri um, digital communities and network building. Um, we want to showcase this innovation. We want to to move this along. And if we don't make sure that we're including women, women will be left out, and perhaps even more so than they already are. So. When we start talking about well, how can we innovate, how can we discover more things, how can we push this forward, I think that gender necessarily became part of the conversation. So my understanding is that the Commission had talked to the coordinators of these projects, in this case George Beers, and had said, look, you know, this would be really useful if we did something as a joint effort. So the two projects um, started a gender committee and one is in communications and one is in analysis. And the analysis part is really important because it's about well, where are we now and where can we go in the future and what steps do we need to do to go along the way? So we decided, fine, we'll do in a, a sort of a primary study to look at where are we now and we did our we did a literature review and, and sort of great literature review. And then we from that we set out our mission and vision and our goals, objectives and actions that would be taken. Um, and then we also wanted to know well, how do we know when we've at least made project progress. I wouldn't be so optimistic as to say when we've arrived, but when have we made progress, right? And also what really important here is what lessons can we, we bring forward for the future, particularly as a policy input point of view and also sort of filling the knowledge gaps for future action, whether public or private. Um, so, you know, some of the things that we were looking at was um, we looked internally as well, and, and we, we didn't have the best representation of women either. Only 14% of project coordinators were women in IOF. Um, in Smart Agri Hubs, we only had 25% women that were involved in the research teams, a little bit more in the innovation experiments. Um, so we thought, okay, well, you know, what can we do to push this forward? So in March 2020, we set up this, as I mentioned, this gender task force. And some of the things that we've been doing from the communication side, um, and Schuttler and Partners is also very much involved with that and also a board from, from across the projects. Um, March 2020, we launched um, on the Smart Agri Hub website, and Giovanna can put that in the chat, um, the links for that, um, our first sort of publication about that. Since then, we've had a special issue newsletter published in July 2020. We've conducted almost with 19 interviews with both men and women to get a sense of what's going on. We launched a gender neutral or a gender equality toolbox, and that can be found online as well. We have a Gender Friday initiative. We have a blog on this once a month. We have gender ambassadors. We've reached almost 60,000 people thus far on social media, which I think is fabulous. 
Okay, and I won't go through the rest of the stats because I want this session to be more about the wonderful people that we have here to speak to us. From the analysis side, as I mentioned, we did a literature review and we're also going to launch a, um, a highly ranked um, scientific journal uh, issue, special issue in sustainability. And then we're going to also launch a survey that we've been working on for some time um, based on sort of our scientific research and our great literature research and our experiences in both projects to get a much better sense of where we are. And more importantly, what can we do and going forward? What are the, what are the best practices? Because we do have really good examples um, that can teach us things. So um, I think I've covered what I'm supposed to cover. Just let me check all my notes. Um, so basically, yeah, it's time for us to walk the talk, as they say, and um, move this along. From a personal point of view, you know, I've been hearing since the 1970s that it's only a matter of time. Um, well, before I retire, I would like us to get rid of that notion that time, somehow with this arc of time, we will somehow fix all inequalities. No, it requires action. And I think we have a lot of people who are ready to take action. I think that from women farmers on the ground to people who are involved in research, to people in public policy and government, we've got a lot of people. And let me please underline this. It's not just women who are involved in this. But on our gender committees, and particularly in the analysis committee, sorry, analysis committee, we've actually got more men than women. Um, so, with not much further ado, I'll leave it to Giovanna, and she will um, start the the question session with our guests, and and more importantly, introduce our guests. And then I'll be looking at the chats as well. And let's have a wonderful session. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Well, today with us, we have four ladies standing out in the agri-tech sector with their diverse background, influenced by different cultures, history, and education. They have one thing in common, and this is passion for agriculture. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our panelists, Doris Markart from the European Commission, DG Agri. She's also IF 2020 project officer. Antonella Di Tono is a far farmer, owner on, of Talamonte Viticulture Company, one of the most dynamic uh, for this sector in Italy. Doris Latina, she's a vice president at the European Council of Young Farmers, CIGA, acting as a forum for communication between young farmers and European decision makers. And we have also here with us Nititi Mibiko Motsehoa. She is a development activist, economic transformation champion, and a full-time agripreneur, also a small-scale farmer in the beef value chain associated with two IOF 2020 use cases. Uh, we have a diverse representation also, as, as um, Cynthia mentioned, from the policy level and also from um, the, the farm level. So, um, we have ladies that will bring their uh, diverse experience and will share their opinion on the current situation in the industry on the topic of gender equality. So I would like to, we'll have a two round of questions. Each will have three minutes approximately. Each panelist will have three minutes approximately to answer the question. And you're very much encouraged to use a Q&A part of the um, application to your right side. And after, uh, after, after the last uh, question, when the last question is answered, we'll tackle these questions. So um, I would like to start with Doris. Uh, Doris, it's, uh, it has been said that the future of agriculture in Europe has much to do with digitalization. Still today, women are particularly women farmers are often absent in this transformation, as we also saw and witness uh, on a daily basis. Can you name some programs and initiatives of the Commission for Empowering Women Farmers and Women Involved in the Agriculture of Business to engage with digitalization? Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and thank you also for the invitation. And I would like also to thank the project team for the nice work in this field with the both projects because it was really nice to follow over the last year the discussion and the work around this subject. 
So um, as representative of DG Agri, I would like to reflect a little bit first before addressing the question. If we look at digitalization in agri-tech, actually we have two perspectives. We have the developers and we have the users. And I think it's very important um, to consider the equal opportunity question from both sides. Because as developer, as researcher, as innovator, you may think, okay, it's a question of personal interest. We are educated, we have the opportunity to decide where we go following our interests. If you look at the rural populations and farmers' business and so on, um, not everybody is that educated or can at a youth stage judge the importance of which skills we need. And digital skills, basic digital skills become like mathematics, like reading, much more important. And at a certain stage, we do not even be aware of it. So meaning there is some steering needed to educate the people that digital skills become important also for the basic users, the basic rural population, and actually also for the farmer only as a user to understand, for instance, the contracts. So digital skills in Agritech have really two dimensions in the development sphere and also in the user sphere. And um, why it's important, we could say, we could argue now, um, at the developers, okay, if only men are interested in informatics, fine for us, then we have all working places by men, it's still equal opportunities. So as long as that is granted, it could be fine. But why is that maybe too short-sighted? So there's one good reason. If we look, for instance, AI applications and algorithms and so also in research. It even starts with the subject which we uh, investigate and explore and put on the agenda. Meaning, if we only have programmers, male programmers, they would always tend to have also a more male perspective in the algorithms. So, and so far, if we aim at having more female targeted algorithm in Agritech, it's also important to involve um, female programmers right from the beginning. And now there's a question, what is the Commission doing? So I have to say the Commission has limited power in the fields of education and labor rights. But that does not mean, by no means, mean that the topic is not of importance for the Commission. And I think who has followed over the last year the, the ambitions and equal opportunities as a Commission and in digital skills in general, then you see that the topics are high on the agenda. But let's look internally into Giacqui what was our women's day so actually we had a lunchtime debate on women in agriculture and that means the clear VA of awareness raising and that's quite important so awareness raising also among the administration and the persons judging for instance on project proposals on programming on writing programs and making sure that equal opportunities are considered in the programs so then a key word is also indicators, because statistics you actually need to reflect on this topic and to raise awareness. So that are the main instruments we have at the moment, and then the campaigns and agendas and the different programs forthcoming. So I think, uh, do I still have to? <laughs> Otherwise I can hand over, but I think the, we have also the second round of questions that are the main instruments we have at the moment. And over the last years, we have several initiatives related to digitalization and skills in general, and to get the equal opportunities done and on the agenda. So to mention the most important, the education and skills agenda. Horizon Europe, you know, uh, Horizon 2020, you know the agenda. And also for rural digital skills, basic digital skills, we have it. But for agriculture and agri-tech, so I think you have some um, a little bit outstanding initiatives, and I think it's the more we should appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doris. Uh, we're going to move on um, with uh, to our second panelist, Antonella Di Tono. Uh, Antonella is an accomplished winemaker, a strong supporter of sustainable agriculture, which implies, among other things, a meaningful connection with the 
geogra geographic territory and history and traditions of the region. So today we're cu uh, curious to hear uh, how do you view, let's say, this non-traditional uh, related issue, the role of women in leadership and the role of technology in sustainable agricultural and uh, enterprise. Thank you very much for the invitation. And this question is very important to me as a national vice president of Coldirecti Women. Uh, you know, Coldirecti has 1.5 million of agricultural entrepreneurs and is the biggest trade union organization in Europe for agriculture. Our organization has strongly worked to create opportunities for our women leaders through the recognition of multifunctional agriculture and social agriculture as a welfare model. I see uh, the role of women in leadership as agents of change and as agent of sustainability. That is the result of our different leadership style and is the result of our greater resilience and our greater innovation skill. I come from a small town, a small village called Loreto Prutino, that is in the central Italian region of Abruzzi, where the feminization of agriculture started only with my parents' generation. In the 1919, feminization of, ag of agriculture became a standard and began bringing several innovations that have brought greater advancement for sustainable and organic farming and higher levels of education within the leaders. Women have a different leadership styles that bring change. We have a leadership that privilege a cooperative network system that includes business, community and family. We have a leadership that is fostered by relational skills that are typical of a woman and that create a great sense of community and a great sense of involvement. Concerning the role of technology in a sustainable agricultural enterprise, I want to say that sustainable agriculture and technology integrate three main goals facing in my company. Environmental health, economic profitability and gender equality. For this reason, we introduced this year a digital platform for precision farming. Technology has permitted to us to minimize emission and pollution, having a natural resource consumption that comes 100% from renewable energy, from sun and wind. Technology has permitted us to monitor the quality of our wines during the production by using proper data in the decision making process, and technology has reduced our investment needs improved our economy efficiency. This has brought greater productivity and therefore higher profits for us. Technologies has permitted us to trace our wine around the world in 50 countries and to communicate directly with our consumer through the QR codes in the back label. Obviously, during this pandemic, technology has led the way in our sales department with digital communication and effective CRM for sales and prospecting. Technologies has also been a strong ally in position women at the head of our departments in roles that previously required a stronger physical strength and can now be tackled with technology by all. So when you ask me about technology and my sustainable wines, I believe that is a primary need. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much, Antonella. Um, we're moving on to our uh, third panelist, Doris Letina. Uh, Doris, can you tell us uh, a bit more about uh, the profile of women in the Young Farmers Association? Traditionally and currently, farmers associations, their cooperatives and their representative bodies are often heavily dominated by men. At the same time, agritech also follows the path of other tech-dominated sectors with a lacking presence of women. Uh, could you tell us about the role and profiles of young women in your organization? Do you think young farmers will bring about positive change for women and the more equal position, but particularly in the increasing trend in the use of digital technologies in agriculture? Uh, thank you. First, thank you for, uh, for having me here. I need to say that in this role, so women in the Young Farmers Association uh, need to come together, or I can freely say come together, equality, inclusion, empowerment, trust, and diligence. And I mean, not just in our organization, I'm sure that also in some others. So CEJA is European Council of Young Farmers, 
uh, and brings together many young women uh, in a variety of positions. If I just start from Cesar's office, where it's really uh, empowered by women, so policy advisor, secretary general, project manager, communication officer, then if we are going to national organization, we heard the speaker before, the colleague uh, from Italy, so from chairs to vice president, and last but for sure not least, farmers. There are a lot of amazing, innovative, successful managers that leading farms and being women. And I'm sure that we are all aware that there is not just farming, but also uh, plenty of other things on the farm uh, and everything while taking care of their family. And what's really important and how to gain uh, visibility of this, uh, this woman, they need to gain more visibility so that other people, uh, the organizations, association, uh, feel on board as well. Uh, and digital technology can have a major impact in this, uh, not, to, not just simplifying production, also using thoughts instead of muscles, uh, that we are all aware, and also spreading all these good stories, information, and uh, for sure, positive images of being farmer. So I'm sure the digitalization makes it faster and more efficient, but not by itself, with us, with all of us. Uh, so I strongly believe that young farmers are bringing positive change for women uh, and a more equal position for us uh, in all kinds of associations, organizations, on farm. Uh, but there's still a lot to do. And um, let me highlight the importance of the words that I used in the beginning. So equality, inclusion, empowerment. Uh, it is still rare in the global music, uh, but uh, we have really good examples. Uh, and helps her husband at the fourth, cor fourth corner as well. And on the farm, it's also many other corners in the in the barns. Um, so that that needs to be. I'm really glad that we have this event today. Uh, I think that's also one big step uh, that is uh, creating big, bigger mission. Thank you very much, Doris. Um, I would like to... view on women in digitalization in agriculture. We found that there, is, there has been a little research in Europe on the role of women in ag tech and the impact of innovation they may bring about. We did uh, find some, of course, on the digital, um, uh, on, in the digital rural areas. However, uh, we did uh, find a wealth of scientific literature and case studies on the impact and potential for women farmers and digital technology in many non-European countries, particularly African countries. So I assume you don't find that surprising given your broad experience in several countries. Could you tell us a bit about your observation on digital agriculture potential for inclusiveness of women in farmers in Africa, perhaps um, commenting on your I have 2020 experience as well um, in overall, why do you think it is um, such an issue in Europe and what can European farmers and associations learn from their counterparts in South Africa? Thanks for the opportunity. Greetings to everyone. Uh, the first aspect of your question, I have a yes and no there. Uh, women, us as women, we are really disadvantaged in a totally unique way, right? So it, it, it makes sense that since we can relate to our challenges, it is important that we avail ourselves, right, and take charge 
of our desired goals. So it is entirely logical to suggest different different interventions for inclusion in agriculture. By different, I simply mean that we need to categorize them, right? We need to make sure that they are targeted. I'm happy that there's a strong sense of data collection in as far as um, the sector is concerned. So that data will enable us or will quite assist us to make sure that our interventions are targeted and are really sustainable. And the no part of it is that as much as we are saying we are championing targeted interventions, I, I have a strong view that if pharma is not really a gender specific title, it's a, it is about human beings that can successfully participate in the sector, right? Both in horizontal and, very, and, 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 and vertical uh, uh, value chains. So in, in addition to that, the society has an opportunity to extract value from the larger part of the of the population develop and support that if we are really serious about growth of the sector and inclusivity in the sector i mean in the universe uh, you have more than 43 percent of workers in the sector in developing countries and in sa on its own you have more than 60 percent of female that are farm workers so it's important that we also focus on making sure that we have a clear transition as far as elevating those women uh, to be to be actively participate in the sector. So whoever came with a suggestion that uh, farming is solely for men, I still want to meet that person because we are here to prove him wrong. Um, and 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 to the question of 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 the the the, the architect and women. I mean, the, the, the program that I'm presenting right now uh, in partnership with Hetsi, which is a black um, emerging female farmer, is, 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 is a one of its kind. And I'm, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm certain that it's bringing an implementation of what has been championed in the whole world in as far as women in livestock particularly in beef value chain, because it brings an end-to-end -end, end -end approach where technology will, will play a critical role in making sure that there's fund management, particularly in the rural uh, economies, and you have a collar that will be attached to the, to, to the cattle so that even the, 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 the commercial partners which is the private sector in, 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 in our context will make sure that women are doing the right thing all the time. So our beef, uh, our, our, our black emerging female farmer project is coming really to bring one comprehensive approach in terms of uh, uh, acquiring and achieve a sustainable food security uh, uh, systems to job creation, three, women empowerment, four, literally handhold women to understand the importance of health management and quality produce and it's linked directly to the to, to, to the to the market access already we've got commercial uh, sectors which owns uh, an entire value chain in terms of beef production processing feedlot that is on board to make sure that there's a market linkages attached to this program. And I mean, uh, the rest of the world can, can learn a lot. My prescription is that we need to encourage and incentivize, and incentivize women in leading roles in agriculture. And this must happen so that we're able to also inspire young women, right, for future generations to come. And also, a, a, a cheaper technologies like Hetsi that is coming on board, which is a very great privilege of us because we have U, 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 U Richard Hobson, which is a CEO of, of Hetsi, and, and Malcolm Motley, who is a global um, livestock judge, who came on board and say, in the context of South Africa, we are here as a private sector to make sure that the triple partnership that has been championed, we are implementing it. And also we have Standard Bank who's coming on board to support this initiative of tech savvy solutions for women. So there's a lot that the rest of the world can learn from us. I mean, if you look at our location, 
I, I need to start compliment and, and indicate that I've always admired the diversity of European farming and how EU has sought to look after its farmers, especially uh, financially. So if you ask me what South Africa can teach Europe, it's, it's, it's quite easy. In South Africa, we're a country that is right at the junction of, of the world, right? You are surrounded by two oceans. If you look at the West, you see South America, the big cattle producers in Brazil are there. And if you look at the East, you see the big future agri markets of India and China, and, and let alone the, our own market within the continent, particularly now that we've launched the Africa continental free trade. Technology and market opportunities are really endless. So we need then to have a, a, a targeted interventions that will make sure that women are not left out. And, and furthermore, really, we have arable capabilities, beautiful climate, really making sure that the policies are implemented for equality purposes. However, it is critical, right, that all the stakeholders must understand that the need for a clear interpretation and understanding of what it entails to develop when women agripreneurs is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, indeed, we can learn a lot from, from, from what was uh, said in this only uh, few minutes. Uh, we have um, 10 more minutes and I would like to do another round of uh, questions. So uh, we just need a bit to speed up in order to have everybody uh, addressing their questions. And really, this is for Doris. Now the question comes naturally. What kind of measures could be put in place in the future to accelerate the closing of the gender gap? to ensure equal opportunities both for men and women in agriculture at the European level, but also at the regional and local level of, of the European countries? Yes, thank you for the question. I will try to make it brief. So I, as already indicated in some contributions, most important personally, I regard the early awareness raising of both agriculture and digitalization and at early stages in school already, that that forms a basis actually for both and to have the capacities later to decide on what way persons want to go, for instance, in digitalization and Aquitech, for instance. Looking at the concrete policies, um, the Commission published the Digital Decade Communication and two aspects of cross-sectoral relevance call the attention on this communication, that is digital basic skills and then the IT specialists. Both are quite important in such a communication and it's a digital decade. Okay, what would we like to achieve until 2030? And for the IT specialists, um, that's really clearly the gender balance is in the scope of the communication and it's a proposal what is to be achieved jointly in the European Union by 2030. So there is a clear ambition to go there and have also female IT specialists on the agenda. And that is joint capacity building. If I should bring a second example closer to the project here, and we are in Horizon 2020 currently and will go to Horizon Europe. And you might have taken note that the Horizon Europe strategic plan has been published um, two days ago. And Gender equality is a cross-cutting priority. And that means that normally nearly all projects, if there's not a clear reason why not so, have to foster gender equality and equal opportunities. So meaning um, I personally look forward to many more projects which address this question in the field of agriculture and digitalization in a similar way as you did it and continue with the work in this field. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doris. Looking forward to it, indeed. Uh, second question for Antonella Di Tono. Um, your company sets an example to follow in respect to gender equality and diversity. Um, how can we encourage, of course, from your perspective, more European organizations and SMEs to take more active role in applying principles of gender equality and diversity in the sector? Thank you for the question. To overcome the obstacle to achieving gender equality in European organization and small businesses will require action in many areas. There are several ways to encourage more European organizations to take an active role 
in gender equality and diversity. And first, I think, uh, encourage by example. Uh, taking into account uh, the culture you are forming around you and the legacy you are leaving behind with every decision you make. Every business needs to be proactive with this. I, for example, in Italy recognize Antinori, that is the, the, the most famous uh, family wine business and uh, brand, uh, for placing three women at the top of the organization. Secondly, we uh, can improve Encourage individually by networking. Create your own cooperative network system that rotates around your ecosystem and broker gender equality and diversity by promoting gender equality as a criteria for selecting your suppliers, for example. This can be done locally within your industry and your business sector. Three, uh, three encouraged by influencing and transforming your local educational system. You have to, we all have to invest in our future workforce. It is necessary to start teaching from a young age about the importance of gender equality. As a community, we want our schooling system from the start to tackle gender stereotype and create a more gender inclusive learning environment by, for example, organizing information sessions and toolkits for students. Four, encourage through our political system. Gender equality should be used as a criteria for providing funding capital by the European institution. It could be a very effective soft incentive to encourage gender equality in business. The requirement of an international certification in diversity, such as GEEIS, to qualify for European funds or for additional points for a superior ranking. And this would certainly incentivize greater gender equality. I, I finish saying that COVID-19 pandemic is certainly a major challenge for gender equality from many different perspectives. But I am confident there can also be an opportunity such as greater freedom that we, we gain a smart working from home and for the new digital channels to explore our benefits. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Antonella. Before we move to our next question, I would just like to ask our technical chair if we can get three additional minutes as the session was also late. This would uh, give us enough time to, to finish with the questions. Uh, yes, a, a tiny of course. Okay. Of course. Okay, thank you. Um, question for Doris. Um, with COVID-19 pandemics, more people are turning to farming. What are some of the most common barriers to youth and particularly young women nowadays? Um, so first I need to say that the percentage of young farmers is still low. In EU we have less than 6% of young farmers which are managing farms and the percentage of women in this, uh, in this is just 30%. So it's extremely low percentage which speaks for itself. Uh, and it's still not uncommon for parents to say their children find, find a good job uh, that will provide you safe income. At least in Slovenia is uh, that way. That is the first big barrier. Uh, so the reputation of being a farmer needs to become better uh, than unstable income. Uh, farming sector is a factory under the, the open sky. Uh, so farming is challenging sector for itself, uh, access to land, then access to knowledge, which needs to be accessible, affordable, useful. Uh, we can have all the knowledge of the world, but if we don't have finance to implement technologies, uh, that's also uh, extremely important. Then climate changes, that are just some of the challenges we are facing, uh, especially young people and especially, especially women. Uh, so women in agriculture uh, do work and manage farms, uh, associations, or maybe do something third uh, in agriculture and equal footing or even better. So it's unacceptable that this role is still under-recognized. I believe there, that uh, there would be more willingness to become a farmer if more opportunities for women to start farming were available. Um, and all the challenges can become opportunities if we find a way to address them right. Uh, so I strongly believe that young farmers are bringing positive change for women in, in a more equal position for us, uh, but still lots to do. 
so we can uh, we can go through these barriers together. Thank you, Doris. Um, and the last question for uh, Nititi, and uh, I'll just ask to try to sum up in two to three minutes. It, these are complex questions, and I understand they take um, much more time than three minutes, but we're challenged by the time. Uh, you you self-describe development activists and um, economic transforma uh, transformation champion. What recommendations do you have to fast track an inclusive agri-tech agenda? And should the strategy be different for women? Thanks, Ravana. Look, the strategy will have to be different in the sense that here we are trying to level the playing field. Hence, I mentioned earlier that you need a very clear evidence-based targeted intervention so that we know you can achieve equal uh, participation. Uh, furthermore, like I've said earlier, remember that the, the sector on its own is not really about just men participation. It is people that are able to participate successful in the sector and be sustainable. So it's, it's very important that to make sure that you encourage women to participate in the sector by firstly, make sure that you reimburse them or incentivize them uh, in their efforts. I mean, I'm a farmer myself in, 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 and I've dedicated more than 10 years in, in as far as championing a, a voice of women. And, and, and secondly, the importance of making sure that women are organized, right? In my other cap, I'm, I'm, I'm leading a, an organization of, of or that is AFASA, which is African Farmers Association of South Africa, where I'm responsible for the development of women. So we really impress, we are really impressed that the world is starting to understand that when we come up with programs, you need not to leave us out. You need to make sure that we are part of that programs right from it, from strategic approach right up, up to implementation. But I want to go back to our uh, 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 beef uh, imaging female farmer program. If you look at it, it's not only about job security. In addition to this, we have a pandemic here in our country where GPV is, 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 is quite um, appalling. So once you empower women at that level, you're not only curbing right GPV, but you bring a sustainable economic, economic sense of these women. So that they need not to be in this relationship uh, just for bread and butter issues. Number two, the stock theft is quite high in our sector, but with Hedzi and with the, our program, with the collars that these animals will be having, will literally reduce the number of animals that are being stolen because you'll be able to trace your animals. And secondly, the road accidents in our roads, particularly in some areas like Eastern Cape, where I'm originally from, there, there, there's more than 40% of communal farming there with beautiful arable capabilities. So once you are able then to, 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 to curb the road accidents, you realize that economic uh, um, uh, uh, um, intervention here is not only up just about food on the table, it's all, it, it brings broad interventions. And as much as we are now hijacked by COVID, remember we were talking about climate change. So uh, there's a speaker earlier, who, Mr. Richard, I just want to get his name, sorry, Mr. Alexander Berlin, who mentioned about carbon tax. I mean, our program talks to that because if you look at the felt management, you're able also to adapt and mitigate e e e climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Um, I'm inspired. Cynthia, how did we hold this session? <laughs> um, do we have time for a very, very rapid wrap up? Yeah, if it's really, really fast. Yes, yeah. then, then that will be the last, the last words of the day. Okay, I've, I've taken uh, notes a lot. And what I've done is I've highlighted sort of key themes, and I'm just going to run down them very sort of scatological. Um, the point about developers and users absolutely are wonderful um, because what we're talking about there is the whole chain, the whole value chain. And that's, we can't just separate um, the relationships between members on the value chain. Digital skills, education, education. We've heard that many times. Different types of digital skills, capacity building, leadership, encouraging leadership, empowering leadership, demonstrating by leadership styles, encouraging by examples, networking, acting locally, um, the support from organizations, organizations and institutions matter, challenges, um, reputation, bad poor reputation, climate change, um, very good things on targeted interventions, 
um, to make things really sustainable, strong data collection, participation in both horizontal and vertical value chains, um, market access, financing, again, evidence-based and participation, participation. And finally, the point about we're here, women are there, they just need visibility and acknowledgement and the chance to participate. That's it. Thank you so much for so many great interventions. And I think we probably run out of time. <laughs>